The Type 100 submachine gun, a rare gun, rare on film, and perhaps overused in video games. The Japanese did not arm their military with a submachine gun the same way other armies did in World War II. In the 1920s and 30s, the Japanese army did purchase some 6,000 Sig Bergman 1920 submachine guns and a few Steyr Solithrum S1-100s from Switzerland and Austria. These were used in Japan's war in China in the 1930s. Starting in 1942, Japan began production of a homegrown submachine gun, the Type 100, but less than 30,000 were produced, with some quoting this number as much lower. They were designed and built by the famous Nambu Arms Manufacturing Company. There were earlier Japanese submachine gun experimental designs, such as the Type 1 and Type 2 models, but neither were adopted by the Japanese military, in part due to manufacturing difficulties. The Type 100 was the design more closely related to the European submachine guns, which the Japanese army had already some experience with. The design for the Type 100 came out in 1939. However, it wasn't given much attention, as the army had just received the Type 99 light machine gun, perhaps Japan's best infantry weapon of the war. The Type 100 became a very low priority, with most interest coming from airborne forces. In 1942, the weapon began slowly being distributed for field testing. By late World War II, it was clear to the Japanese not prioritizing a submachine gun was an oversight. Submachine guns were extremely effective weapons in close fighting jungle warfare. In January 1944, Type 100 production was streamlined. The Type 144 lost its adjustable sights and was given a simple muzzle brake and heat shield. Stocks were roughly finished and weld quality decreased. However, despite this, they demonstrated decent reliability with low recoil. Maintenance was also straightforward. Original variants of the gun had a rate of fire of 450 rounds a minute. This was increased to 800. The weight also increased from 3.7 kilograms to 4.2, or just under 10 pounds. The curved box double stack magazine held 30 rounds of the small 8x22mm Nambu. Not an ideal round for firing through thick jungle foliage. 8x22 Nambu has about half the energy of a 9mm round fired from an Australian Owen gun though this is one of the reasons the Type 100 had very manageable recoil, important as the gun could only fire in fully automatic. And of course, like most Japanese weapons, the Type 100 could mount a large bayonet. Ultimately, the Type 100 would see extremely limited use during the war, though it did serve the Japanese public after the war, as some local police would be armed with the submachine gun. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this short brief on the Type 100. Sorry there are so few resources for this uncommon weapon. I hope you have a nice rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.